Hi guys, Dr. H here, your source of advanced musculoskeletal care, and today I want to talk about a particular technique that I use when I do hands-on manipulation for your musculoskeletal problems. This technique is known as high velocity, low amplitude. Let's talk about it. So the technique I want to talk about today is known as HVLA, which stands for high velocity, low amplitude, and is a technique that's is performed exactly as it sounds, a short, quick thrust, usually applied to a joint. It looks a little something like this. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate what this HVLA technique looks like. I'm gonna first do it in the traditional way to the spine on articular structures, so I'm gonna do the thoracic spine and the neck, and then I'll show you how I do it on soft tissue structures using the leg and the head to work these uh, soft tissue chains that go up and down the body like that. So the first thing I'll do is have you cross your arms, Roll you towards me. Good. Breathe in, and then let all the air out. Good. Same thing. Just let your head drop and relax. So that's what it looks like to these articular structures. That's more traditional style HVLA that you might see physical therapist or chiropractor also do, but you can also apply it to soft tissue structures. So if I pick up this leg here, I know because I've already diagnosed this patient, that there is a line of tissue going up this leg and about toward the middle of her back. And I can actually target that through the leg and use the same type of technique. Like that. Sort of a bottom-up approach, you can also do a top-down approach. like that. And that's what HPLA looks like. So this technique can go by various different names depending on who's doing it. There's a lot of different type of practitioners who do this technique. I think it's been popularized uh, primarily by chiropractors, but osteopathic physicians like myself, allopathic or MD physicians who work in the musculoskeletal fields like sports medicine physiatry do it, physical therapists do it. A whole bunch of people do this technique and they have each have their own sort of name for it. In terms of the history of this technique, it's been done forever. It's probably been done before Hippocrates. In terms of establishing it in a field of medicine, especially in this country, in the United States, it was popularized in the mid to late 1800s by kind of two separate people. The founder of osteopathic medicine, A.T. Still, and the founder of chiropractic medicine, D.T. Palmer. Now you can get into a really, really heated debate as to whether or not D.D. Palmer stole the idea from A.T. Still or kind of came up with it entirely on his own and separately. I don't really care, so I'm not going to get into it. So probably the most distinguishing element about this technique is that fun pop that you get when you apply it to joints. So what is that pop? Believe it or not, for a very long time, we had no idea. We had different theories of different things it could be, but didn't have any concrete evidence one way or the other. That changed in around 2015. They were able to use a functional MRI, so an MRI that can actually see inside the body at real time, while a joint was cracking to see what was going on. And what they found is when you crack a joint, you create a bubble inside the joint space. So a joint space consists of two bones that are kind of close to each other, but not necessarily touching. There's actually a layer of fluid between them called synovial fluid. It's the oil that lubricates your joints, if you will. And when you rapidly separate those two surfaces, gases that are sort of diffused into the fluid will create a bubble due to a rapid change in pressure in that joint. And the inception of that bubble, the creation of that bubble, creates that pop sound. Then the bubble collapses, the gases go back into the liquid, and everything resets. It takes about mm, roughly 20 minutes before you can pop something again. So the important thing to note about that explanation of what makes the pop is what does that have to do with the bones and the joints itself, and really nothing. So I talked about previously in the last video I did on five musculoskeletal myths, how cracking your knuckles won't cause them to get arthritis. And the reason is you're not actually doing anything to the surfaces of the bone, you're just playing with the fluid inside the joint. Uh, I can link to that video up here if you want more information on that. So the important thing to talk about regarding that sound and that pop is while it's satisfying to hear and always fun, it has little to nothing to do with the therapeutics of the technique. Uh, it might have some psychological benefit because when you hear that pop you think something happened, 
But that's not necessarily the case, or at least if something happened, it's not necessarily what needed to happen. It's just the fact that we separated two surfaces of a joint really quickly, and then you can create that bubble. So the number one thing I'm usually having to explain to patients when I'm doing this technique is, if I do this sort of rapid short thrust on something and you don't get a pop sound, it doesn't mean it didn't work. It just means that for whatever reason, we didn't separate those two joints just right to create that little bubble and cause the pop sound. So if the cracking has nothing to do with how this technique works, how does it work? Previously, it was kind of believed that you were popping things back into place and that was making the joint sound, which you can kind of understand how people might think that would lead to joint degeneration or arthritis. If you're shifting a bone back into place, sure, you're gonna put some wear and tear on the joint surfaces, but we know that's not the case. If you go and see your physical therapist, chiropractor, myself, and you have this technique done to you, we're not actually popping or realigning anything in your back by like brute force. What's really going on is actually incredibly complicated and I'm going to oversimplify the heck out of it. If you're one of those people who likes the really nitty gritty details, I actually just published an article in the Journal of American Osteopathic Association in the October 2019 edition and I'll put the link to that down below if you're just one of those individuals who needs to know exactly how this works. It's actually working through neurology, through the nervous system. You have all these tiny muscles relatively tiny muscles, going up and down your spine, we'll just use the spine for example, but they're around every joint. And these muscles tell your brain where things are in space. This is called proprioception. Your brain's ability to know where you are uh, at any given time or where any body part is at any given time is your proprioceptive sense. So what we're doing when we do this thrust, this thrust, this high velocity, low amplitude, this short, quick thrust, that characteristic seems to have a special effect on the nerves that, that go to these tiny muscles up and down your back. And so when we do this technique and we have that little short, quick thrust, it sends a signal to your brain that resets its proprioceptive sense, that balances it. What can happen is if there's a disruption in this proprioception, this idea of where your back is in space, that can cause pain. A great example of this is they did a study where they took healthy volunteers and put them in front of a mirror. These volunteers would then move their limbs around. And the mirror was designed so that there would be a delay in what they saw versus what they felt. So when they moved their arm up and down, for example, there'd be like, I don't know, a half second delay or a, even less than that delay of what they saw in the mirror. And believe it or not, these people who had no pain, very healthy volunteers, experienced pain doing this. And the reason is, is your visual input and what you can see is a big aspect of your proprioception so is what you can feel and those little muscles that tell your brain where your limbs are or spine is in space. And when those are sending two different messages to your brain, your brain gets very confused and interprets that as pain. This happens all the time in the body. We talked about tensegrity and how the body is sort of structured and how that can get disrupted. When that gets disrupted, it can affect the proprioceptive system. What this technique does when I'm pushing and thrusting and causing you to crack and pop, I'm not putting anything back into place, I'm resetting that uh, sense of proprioception so that we can fix that aberrancy. So the important thing to note here is that, yes, it's traditionally done to the spine because the spine is sort of the main element of your central nervous system. If I thrust on your lumbar spine, your low back, where the nerve to your legs go, I can affect the muscles and the proprioception and the nervous system in your legs. If I do it higher up, I can affect it in your arms and so on and so forth. And so knowing where to do this is very, very important, which is why if you come to see me for, say, knee problems, I might do this technique to your low back, even though your low back doesn't hurt. That explains why I'm doing it there. In addition, even though it's traditionally done to the spine and to joints, it doesn't have to be. You can do this to soft tissue. In the demonstration that you saw earlier in this video, I did these pulling techniques to the, the head and neck or to the leg. I'm not really trying to pull the hip joint or crack the neck when I do that, what I'm doing is I'm working those up and down tissues, those chains of muscle and, and, and fascia, which I'll talk about in a different video later on that kind of go up and down the body to reset proprioception on a more global scale. So that's the technique of high velocity, low amplitude. It's a little complicated, but it's very, very powerful and can be very, very effective. And it's also very, very popular. It's probably one of the sexiest techniques people do. I mean, there's whole videos on YouTube and playlists of just watching people crack other people's backs because it's a satisfying thing to hear and see. But it's a lot more complicated than just popping and cracking and making you feel good. It has a whole neurological component to it. And that's why I wanted to explain in this video.
Hope that's of interest to you. Let me know if you like this sort of technique video. I can certainly do more videos on different techniques that I do. I just chose this one because it's sort of the most popular one and, and most well-known one. Until later, keep moving.